Greetings friends, it's Denise again with Denise's Dancing Paintbrush and today I've got another collage for you from my fairy tale alphabet book. This one is a folk tale from Australia, Weeda the Mockingbird. It is rather a gruesome story, so if you don't really want to go there, turn the sound off now. But it is a folktale directly from Australia explaining this little mockingbird. And here's how the story goes. Weeda was a native aborigine in Australia long ago. He had no family, no tribe. As a matter of fact, he hated all other tribes and villages near him, and he wanted to get rid of them so he could be alone. To do this, he decided to build a fake village of grass huts with fires before each one as if people were actually living there. And then he would go into each one and cry like a baby or laugh like a child or sing like a maiden. Weeda was very good at imitating voices. With these voices and many more, he made anyone passing by think that there was a whole village of people there. The purpose was to lure strangers into his camp so that he could kill them. The trick worked for Weeda many times. A fellow would be out hunting and would come within earshot of Weeda's fake village, and hearing a crowd of people's voices, he would wander in and ask what tribe this was. But once inside the circle of huts, the stranger would find that no one lived there but Weeda himself. The, but the stranger would say, I've heard many voices. There must be more people. And coming closer, Weeda would say he was mistaken. Maybe he heard the wind in the branches of the bala trees or a nearby stream. Weeda would invite the stranger to look around for people and convince him that no one else was there. This confused the stranger, and while he was thinking about it, Weeda would shove the stranger into the fire and kill him. In this way, he had killed many people. Now in the villages around Weeda's fake camp, there were many people missing, and it was a mystery what had happened to them. Mulia, which means eagle hawk, had noticed that his best friend, Biraga, which means hawk, had not come home. He was now determined to solve the mystery and find out what happened to his friend and the many others that were missing. Mulya went hunting, as all the others before had done. He found Biraga's tracks and found where he had hunted and slain a kangaroo and then started for home. As Mulya was following his friend's tracks, he came close enough to Weeda's fake village to hear the voices of many people. He heard the shrill voice of an old woman and the shaky voice of an old man, as well as many others, and decided to look into these voices. But he also saw that his friend's tracks took him right up to the village of Grass Huts also and he saw only Weeda there. Mulya approached Weeda and asked, what people live here? I live alone, Weeda explained. But how can that be? I heard many other people and babies crying, Mulya replied. Maybe your ears play tricks on you. Do your eyes see anyone but me here? Weeda asked. But if that's so, can you tell me what has happened to my friend Biraga and the others? Their tracks lead into this village, but none lead out, Mulya asked. Who can say? I know nothing of your friends. Ask the winds. Ask Baloo, the moon, or Yihi, the sun. I live alone and know nothing of your friends. And all the time that Weeda spoke, he stepped nearer and nearer to Mulya, 
edging him towards the fire. Mulya was a very clever fellow, and he could see that Weeda was not telling the whole truth. And he also noticed that Weeda was edging him towards the fire. And he thought to himself, if the fire could speak, it would tell him where his friends were. So playing along, he let Weeda think that his trap was working. But just as he made his usual push to, to his usual move to push the stranger into the fire, Mulya seized Weeda by the arm and stepped to the side so that the mighty shove meant to push Mulya into the fire instead threw himself into the fire. Just as you delivered Baraga and my friends to the fire, so I deliver you. Mulya felt it was justice. As he left to return home to reveal to his many people the mystery was solved, he heard a terrible explosion. The fire had burst the back of Weeda's head, and out of the remains a bird had risen. This was the Weeda, the mockingbird, and to this day, Weeda, the Weeda bird also has a hole at the back of his head. He makes grass huts and imitates any voices he ever hears, including cats, dogs, women laughing, and babies crying. That's an interesting folk tale explaining this little mockingbird. As you know, in many of my collages, I actually hide other pictures into it. Why not? These are, these are cut and torn pieces of paper out of magazines and old wall calendars. So I like to hide a little picture here and there. In this one, you will see the face of a man, a young woman, the face of a teen, and the face of a baby. Oh, and there are also a ring of angels flying in one of the flowers. This is for the letter W, and I am nearly finished with my alphabet book. I've already done X and that leaves me with Y and Z to complete. I should have my my book ready for publication before the end of January. I'm very happy about that. I do hope that you've enjoyed seeing my collage. I hope you enjoyed the story. Here you can see the face of the baby in the wing of the bird. And also in the flower here is a ring of angels. I sure hope you enjoyed this and I, I hope that you take the time to check out some of my links below. I have a Patreon page and um, links to uh, Lulu where you can buy some of my books and this one too when it comes out. Do come again. Bye everyone. Thank you.